Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching. In this video, we're going to continue the conversation around DevOps. This time I'm in Azure DevOps and I've connected Azure DevOps to ServiceNow DevOps. So all of my planning items, my work items, my tasks, my issues, my epics, those will go from Azure DevOps over to ServiceNow. My code commits, my code reversions, my code comments, all that comes from Azure DevOps over to ServiceNow. And in this video, we're going to talk about pipeline. Pipeline is the code orchestration. It's what moves your code from sub-production, from tests to UAT, to production, and all that stuff. And we use that, we use in uh, Azure DevOps, we use the pipeline in order to make that happen. So let's dive right in. There's some key concepts I want you to see here around pipelines. And I'm gonna dive into a YAML file, so it's gonna get a little bit technical, but even for those that are not technical, I think this will be important for you to see. Number one, we've broken up the pipeline into stages. I use for my example, and this is just an example, build, test, deploy. So assuming there's gonna be a build phase, then you might migrate that to a test environment, and then you would go ahead and deploy that. In here, when we start the build phase in um, Azure DevOps in the pipeline, we're gonna send a message to ServiceNow and say, hey, we started. So you can see this little start um, phase. So it knows, so ServiceNow is like, okay, that started at this particular time. Then we're gonna do something. And here we're just saying hello world, right? No big deal. And then after we do something, we're gonna signal back to ServiceNow, hey, we completed. All right, so you can see the little completed phase right there. That is essentially the basic structure in the pipeline to let ServiceNow know a stage or a phase has started and then completed. And this is gonna be important in future videos when you see this being mirrored over in a ServiceNow. The next stage is test, very similar format. So I've got, hey, I started, hey, I completed, and I do something in between, like hello world. Same thing as I did in my build step and in my test step. The last piece that I do on my deploy step is I say, hey, this is actually um, gonna be a change acceleration. So this is where the, the cool stuff come in, comes in. We're gonna open a change request and we're not gonna move this forward in the pipeline until that change request has been approved. Now I have nothing else going on in my pipeline I said, you know, you would actually do something. <laughs> you would do some orchestration. But for demo purposes, I'm just waiting on service now to approve my change and then my pipeline finishes. So the pipeline will actually sit there and be running. And you'll see that again in a future video. Now, before we get to that future video, let's take a look at how I did this, how I got this stuff into my YAML file. In the Visual Studio store, there is a service now um, package you can install and it'll come with these little uh, tasks that you can add to your YAML file. So the one that I was using was this agent job notification. So I pick my ServiceNow instance, I tell it what upstream job and I tell it is my starting or my completing. And the second one that I used was that change accelerator. So you can see down here, I've got this server change accelerator and I use that to let ServiceNow know that uh, I'm gonna actually make a change or I'm requesting an actual change. Now in this, you can provide different um, change request details. So in this box, I pointed to the wrong one there. So I can actually add different things in like implementation plan, backout plan, all that stuff. Or you can use a template over in ServiceNow, but that's where you do that over uh, on this pipeline setup. So let, we'll end like this uh, for this video. I wanna show you what a pipeline actually looks like. So you can see there the different stages as they represent uh, for one that has it gets done. And I'll just open one up so you can see how that would progress. I've got build, I've got test, and I've got deploy right there. And so this deploy step, the way I have it configured and the way we'll show it in a future video is it's gonna open a change request in service now. And if you saw my change policy video, depending on some criteria, it may automatically approve the change or it may assign it to a group for approval. Thus, at that last part, stopping the pipeline until someone does that approval. So big stuff to come on this one. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe or share it with somebody you think might be interested. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.